this is the Racer Star Sick 2207. I don't know if they actually intended to use SIC as in sick, but hey, it ended up landing on that. And hey, it does look super sick because look at the patterning on this motor. So this is really interesting because <laughs> this is a $22 motor from Racer Star and it's a 2207 motor. So Racer Star has never been known for really high quality motors, but lately they have been making some really nice premium motors. They, they don't make anything, they just kind of OEM motors from other companies. And this is yet another OEM motor from another company, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's, please tell me what you think about this kind of like market inversion where we have Brother Hobby and uh, iFlight and a couple other companies that are making budget motors for $14, and we have Racer Star <laughs> making premium motors for $22, which is kind of nuts. Anyways, let's look, take a look at all the parts of this motor. This is supposed to be a premium motor, and it is definitely a premium motor, and it does have all the right parts in it to be a premium motor. It does have 7075 aluminum, which I know because I smashed the crap out of my quad a couple of times, and I did also like kind of try to feel the metal and see if it's harder or soft. It does feel like really hard aluminum metal, and these motors, I can say, are definitely durable because I did smack them really hard against trees and uh, hard dirt. A couple of times so uh, it does have this little grip portion on top of the bell which I think is very important for gripping props it has a titanium shaft which is also very important a hollow shaft hollow all the way through the whole shaft a screw bottom on the shaft it does have a three millimeter I think yeah three millimeter um, socket on the screw head which is really nice you can see it's got that nine millimeter bearing in there really nice bearing uh, the base of the bell has this little railing to hold the wire down, which is really nice because sometimes when you mount it to your frame, it's um, pushing the wiring up and it can run into the bell and it just scratches against the bell. Not really a big deal, but it's a nice feature to see. Yeah, it's got it on the on the sing motors as well. And uh, the wires are 20 gauge. They are gray, which I haven't seen on a motor. So it's nice to have that originality of the gray wire. Go figure. China did something original. Uh, <laughs> probably had some consultation from other people. But let's take a look at the inside. So the inside of this motor, let's actually take apart this one and take a look at the inside. And I brought this one out for a very ugh, specific reason. So the other thing I didn't point out is that the motor is a 34 gram motor, which with this long wire, which is a pretty hefty motor for 2207, but I'll explain why that is in a minute. So the motor on the right is the Sing motor that's a 2207, but what's special about this Sing motor is that it's I don't think it's been released, and this is just the test model, which I've been really awful about, and I haven't gotten around to testing because, for whatever reason, I'm just really busy. So what's special about this motor is that it actually has 0.1 millimeter laminations, which is something that's really special in this uh, industry because getting these laminations really thin is really difficult, and it costs a lot as well. The advantage to having really thin laminations is that the motor tends to be a little bit more efficient and a little bit more powerful, but I've had three motor manufacturers independently, um, 3B, the Get FPV company, um, Lumineer, and uh, another company I can't recall, have all, their engineers have all told me that the laminations from going from 0.2 to 0.15 to 0.1 is really a tiny difference. It's like single percentage points, if anything. So it just adds a lot of cost to the motor. And this is one area where the budget motors are probably going to save. They're going to stick to 0.15 or 0.2 millimeter laminations. And this uh, Racer Star motor does look like it has either 0.12 or point, sorry, 0.15 or 0.2 millimeter laminations, which I really don't see a problem. The windings look really nice. They do look like high quality windings. As I already said, the bearings are, are nine millimeter and um, the motor checks out. It, it's got, it marks all the boxes. The bottom of the, of the bell has the nice lip around the, the magnets so that if the magnets do decide to slip, they're not going anywhere. The bell is two piece. It does have this rim around the, um, the ferrite uh, ring. And then it also has this top portion. And it's really up to you if you care if it's got two pieces. Um, RCN power makes the top of the bell one piece and just slips over the whole magnet ring. So that's nice. Um, so the reason, the other reason why I brought out this Xing or Sing motor is because I wanted to show you that I'm pretty sure, oh, I can't get this piece out. I'm pretty sure that, 
iFlight is making this motor for Racer Star for a number of reasons. First and foremost being that I've only seen iFlight be able to produce this patterning on the aluminum, which is really unique and really nice, looks really cool. Also, you can take a look at the magnet architecture, curved magnets, but you can see that they look very similar. I mean, the rounded edges on the magnets look like they came from the same place. Also, another thing you'll notice is that it's got that little green washer at the end of the bell ring. And that green washer is really interesting. I actually love that feature. I've only seen two motor makers have that feature, uh, iFlight and Flywoo. And I'm pretty sure that Flywoo motors come out of the iFlight factory. I'm pretty sure they're OEMing motors for Flywoo. However, both Flywoo and iFlight deny the fact that they are sharing the same manufacturing line. What's really nice about this little rubber washer is that you can tighten the, sh the screw on the bottom of the shaft 100% and it'll be tightly bound up against the bottom of the shaft and you, you won't bind the bell. It, it'll still spin freely because the, the rubber washer there is giving it a little bit of leeway to allow the bearing to still spin. And that's super nice because you don't have to hold the, screw the screw in like kind of halfway with Loctite and hope that it doesn't come undone. You can just cinch it down, even though this, these motors come with Loctite on the screw, you can just cinch it down and not worry about it because it's not going to affect your motor performance at all. So the one thing I haven't talked about is the performance of this motor. Now, this is supposed to be an 1888 kV motor, and I would bet that it's not actually 1888 kV. I have some 1900 kV motors in 2007 and 2008 and 2008.5 and all sorts of various sizes. I have like four different 1900 kV motors, and I do like 1900 kV on 6S. It is really great. This is definitely a 6S kV, but I would bet that this motor is more like a 1750 kV motor, or if it is 1888 kV, it's a hell of a lot more efficient than my 1900 kV motors of my other models. So uh, yeah, it's not the most efficient motor, but it's definitely not the highest amp draw motor. With res I mean, it does depend on your all-up weight and what prop you put on it, but on a typical race weight of 450 to 500 grams uh, of just racing quad, it's surprisingly not super duper amp hungry, which most 2207s are very similar at this point. So yeah, if you like this motor, it, I mean, the only real reason to get it is for the finish of the motor. Otherwise, I would not recommend anything but the $14 E-Series motors because most of them are exactly the same performance as the higher-end version, and they are just as durable as well now. Uh, there's a couple on the way coming out. I'm, I'm working on a couple that are coming out very soon as well, so... Um, yeah, the only reason you would get this is if you really like the sick finish on it. So yeah, let me know what you think about Racer Star having high quality stuff. I mean, is the market really going to care that now Racer Star has high quality stuff and they might buy it from them anyway? I mean, in my opinion, it's based on what I've seen in the market, people don't really care. They just buy whatever they want and they don't really pay attention to anything else. So maybe Racer Star making high quality stuff might make sense. I don't know. Floss your teeth. Take care. Lots more stuff coming. Stay tuned.